Let's return to Thomas Hunt Morgan's sex-linked flies. So, if he assumed that a trait that he was interested in should have given him, let's say, a one-to-one -one ratio of red-eyed flies and white-eyed flies, right, if that's what he was expecting, but instead, what he observed was five red-eyed flies. What is the probability of this outcome, given this expectation? Well, we know that each mating is independent, right? Each one of these um, each one of these progeny offspring, whether they have red eyes or white flies, is independent of any of the other offspring that this mating produces, which means that every one of these flies had a probability of having red eyes of 0 0.5. And the multiplication rule says that if these events are independent, and again, that we know, we know that they are, then the probability of the intersection of those events is just the product of the probabilities of each of the events. And so, in this case, the probability that you see five red-eyed flies is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, right? Which, if you run the numbers, is about 0.03 or 3%, which is to say that even if what you're expecting is a one-to-one -one ratio of red eyes and white-eyed flies, you'll see five red-eyed flies in a row once every 30 to 33 times you run this experiment, on average. And so this logic Right, this idea that events that happen independently and you're looking for either you know one outcome or another outcome, this kind of probabilistic logic can be expanded using something known as the binomial distribution. And your book goes into substantially more detail about kind of the whys and the wherefores behind this. Let's go ahead and skip over all of that and just get to the end. And let's assume that you have some sort of experiment of the type that either gives you a yes or a no answer, a true or a false, two possible outcomes, and that the probability that that outcome gives you a yes we'll call P, and the probability that the outcome of that experiment is no, we'll call Q, which is 1 minus P. If you perform this experiment n times, or let's say n replicates, and those n replicates give you S, yeses, and T knows, then we know that the probability of this particular outcome, probability of S yeses and T knows, is n factorial, so remember n is the total number of times you did the experiment, over S factorial times t factorial, and all of this is multiplied by p, right? Remember, p is the probability of seeing an, a yes to the s power, s is the number of yeses, times q, right? And remember, q is the probability of seeing no to the t power. And any set, any experiment, I should say, of um, where there are only two possible outcomes, you can formulate in this manner, right? And so let's return to our fly example. If the probability of getting red-eyed progeny is 0 0.5, and the probability of getting white-eyed progeny is also 0 0.5. And so let's ask, for example, what is the probability that we see 
four red-eyed flies and one white-eyed fly. So, in this case, P is 0 0.5, Q is 0 0.5, S is 4, right, we'll call having red eyes the yes state, and T is 1. So now we go ahead and set up the numbers like this, 5 factorial over 4 factorial times 1 factorial times 0 0.5 to the fourth power times 0 0.5 to the first power. Plug that into our calculator and we get 0 0.156. Right, so the probability of doing this experiment five times, looking at five independent flies and seeing four red eyes and one white eye, uh, four flies with red eyes and one fly with white eyes, I should say, is approximately 15%. And so the binomial distribution can kind of help us come to grips with the probability of a certain outcome if we already know what the pattern of inheritance is, right? But that's not actually the question that we asked at the end of the last video. Instead, our question is, if we have a set of observations, do they fit our expectations, right? Or is there something else going on? This takes us into the realm of hypothesis testing, and that's our last topic.